right, everybody, welcome to Infrared Radio here on the PGP Radio Network. I'm Greg, that's Deb, that's and Sheldon, Sheldon. <laughs> and that's Sheldon. Hold on, let me show There we go, there's a picture of us all. All right. Now tell the truth, yes. everybody out there that's watching this video has pooped bigger than Deb's new dog. <laughs> yes, I, I am a new mother. This is Sheldon Cooper Cobble. <laughs> Say hi, Shelly. Hi. <laughs> Shelly is currently in a, in a coma because he spent the last hour screaming bloody murder at me because I wouldn't pick him up because I was in the shower and running the sweeper and stuff like that. And so then I fed him, gave him some mama's milk and a big old blob of nutrient paste and a couple bites of dog food, beef stuff. And and now he's kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> he's a baby. He's only eight weeks old. Oh, uh, he's liable to perk up here in a minute and then he'll be a real pain in the butt. Right. But he's my new baby. I've always wanted to get a Yorkie. I've had I had a Karen Terrier mix who kind of looked like a big Yorkie, but mm -hmm. uh, and I had her for sixteen years, and she went to see Jesus. <laughs> so, <laughs> my husband has a hundred pound lab, and I think that this is the more ferocious of the two. Yes, he will be. He'll, he'll, he'll yeah. be king of the roost. <laughs> I'm telling you, the he, grand poobah of the house. He has no fear. This one here. I'm about to watch him. He has no fear when it comes to the other animals. He Aww. is totally like all about it. No. Say hi, Shelly. Say hi. Hold on, you guys. He, um... he loves to be held, though. I've got to tell you that. Ugh. Right. Which is fine, except for when you're like trying to cook and take a shower and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, real quick, um, when we get kicked off here, uh, I saw, I go to that uh, paranormal news website every once in a while, and I didn't mm -hmm. prepare any any stories or anything, but this particular story caught my eye, and I won't read it all. I'm sure everybody has already heard or, or saw something about it. I'm sure it's played on the local news or whatever. Uh, I guess in Evansville, Indiana, an Indiana woman receives ultrasound vision from Jesus. I saw that. Image appears to show Jesus on the cross. And, uh, you know, and then it showed there's a video and whatnot. Um, I guess, I mean, I could play the video. Um, this is from the, uh, uh, this particular story is from Inquisitor. And, um, yeah, screw it, I'll play it. Let's see what happens. An episode woman was in for a divine surprise after a prenatal checkup at her doctor's office. Yeah, the ultrasound picture, which has now gone viral, revealed much more than the image of her baby boy. And she likes to think of it as a sign from God. Beth Sweeney has a story you'll only see on 14 News. Everybody was just shocked. Like, everybody's like, I have to see that, I have to see that. So I was having to drive this thing all over town to show, like, my grandparents who don't have Facebook and things like that. Allie Meyer is talking about this. An ultrasound picture of her baby that appears to show an image of Jesus on the cross. Okay, that's enough of that. Now, <laughs> what in the world? Okay, and, and you know what? I believe in divine intervention. I do. I believe that there's a higher pow power in our existence that gives us uh, a point A starting point, a point B ending point. I believe that in certain times in your life when you need it the most, little things happen to dig you out of the hole a little bit. You know, and you and I, we have talked about this before a couple shows ago where, you know, it seemed like, when when the wife and I get pretty down and out, like, oh my God, you know, we're down to our last three dollars and twenty five cents, that something happens and we get like fifty dollars from nowhere. You know, and that's kind of eerie in itself. But what in the world would make somebody think that uh, Jesus on the cross, a crucifixion of Jesus Christ is gonna show up in your picture of your ultrasound or on your toast? Or, you know what I mean? I, I see the face of Jesus in the clouds. I mean, how do people think that that... I don't understand that. I don't know. I, I, I it just... To me, it seems like... I saw the picture. It does look like it. I mean... But... Well, it could be the, the reflection off of the, head, the bones on the head. 
you know, in certain yeah. angle of it, it could give, you know, the occipital lobe and the side of the head and the temporal area. And the way that the ultrasound waves are hitting on it could make it have looked like that. You know, but I mean, I guess that being said, too, I mean, if it was a sign for them, then so be it. Okay, whatever. But I just, I don't know. It's sometimes to me, it's just amazing how we as humans create divine visions that suit us. Well, what do they call that when you see a, uh, when you see a picture, when you think you see like a dog in the clouds? Your brain fills in the dots mm -hmm. where it's missing. Yeah. Matrixing. Based on your, you know, I mean, and everybody's difference. Your upbringing, your faith, your intelligence, your education, you know what I mean? Right. Changes the pixels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's, that's matrixing at its finest, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, I guess if they need, you know to be excited about that, then, you know, more power to them, I guess. I mean, yeah, whatever works. Yeah, whatever floats their buckets. Mm-hmm. But... Oh, I'm still in mourning, you know, for Prince. Oh, my God. I know, right? Oh, my heart is broken. My entire life, backdrop of my life was Prince music. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm older. I mean, he and I are the, were the same age, you right, know. Right, right. Uh, well, come on, back in the party days in the you know, you 80s yeah. and 90s for me. The 80s, 70s, uh, 80s, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 80s Prince, it was all about Prince, man. Mm -hmm. I loved everything he did. I had practically every album that he put out. He was and a dirty little bugger back in the day, too. He was a uh -huh. sexy. Yeah, and no, was. guys, all the guys were like... I, they could never. They couldn't see. They they didn't get that sexy part unless they were a little gay or something. You know, uh, you know. They just thought it kind of was girly looking. But uh, I don't know. It worked for me. It worked for most women I knew. He was just over the top. You know. I enjoyed Prince not in a in a you know homosexual not in a sexual way <laughs> type of way, but I enjoyed his music and you know I enjoyed Purple Rain and oh gosh. You know he just had a stigma about him. But you know what. I, I, I spent time learning more about him before he passed away because mm -hmm. I was such a fan. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a devout Jehovah Witness. Mm -hmm. He was uh, a convert. I mean, he sp I saw him on Tavis Smiley shows one time. I was just flipping through the channels and I saw Prince and I, you know, and then I realized, oh my God, this is Tavis Smiley. I'm like, I never watched that stuff. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he was like on there. But you know what? There was something different about him. Uh, I watched him, and I've watched him in other interviews, and I've read things in print over the years, and I always came to feel that he was um, he was a special person. You know, mm -hmm. there was something extra about him that most people did not or weren't tapped into. Right. I must say, and uh, I was really shocked when I heard the news, and I'm always I was, um, you know, sad. Hell, I almost cried. I don't even know the guy personally because, he, you know, all of his songs conjured up so many memories for me personally. And it's as if, you know, a piece of him was a part of my life through his music. Right. And, um, uh, of course, the paranormal investigator in me kicked in right away. I wanted to set up a microphone and start talking to him, <laughs> see if I could get anything. You know, and I know, hell, I may still try that. You never know. Right. You know what I mean? Because he was like in tune. He was, um, what I thought was cool about him, one thing I read that I really was impressed with is, you know how Jehovah Witnesses uh, go door to door and mm -hmm. evangelize? You know what I mean? That's right. part of what they feel they have to do. Right. He did that. He did that in did his he, neighborhood. Right? And, you know, would you not shit if your somebody rang your doorbell and it was Prince? I'd be like, come on now, how much you want to bet he got in more houses than most Jehovah's Witnesses? Probably. Until <laughs> he, he started, no, he started, he, yeah, until he started with, you know your Lord and Savior Jesus yeah. Christ, and it'd be like, ah, oh, shit. Hit and the he, door, play. You know, I'd be like, come on in, can I do a song? No. <laughs> but he, um, no, you know, I mean, he was so part of that community. He was born there, he was raised there, he lived there, he created there, and he died there, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he rode his bicycle around town all the time. He, he went to the local stores and everyone allowed him to just be him. And 
not, you know, get crazy over him. Mm -hmm. And now that was cool and rare. You don't hear about that. But yeah, I'm going to be whipping out my, um, I'm going to be whipping out my, uh, zoom and trying a little bit of something, something. Well, Cause what, what's... I think he was something special. Yeah. I really feel like all of this love and adulation that's just flowing through the world right now before him, I can feel it. I sure know he can feel it. And I almost get a sense, my psychic spidey senses kick in and I almost feel like he's humbled by it. Well, you know, and that's what sucks about the, the entire, like they're saying now that he had a uh, opiate uh, uh, problem and, and, you know, that was one of the reasons that his plane had to stop in Wisconsin and this yeah. that, and the other than he died. But I mean, nobody will ever know really what happened, but well, I'm sure it was prescription because he had bad hips mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I, he was supposed to have, he needed hip replacement surgery. And, uh, I mean, you know, he was getting older. We're like I said, we're the same age and, mm -hmm. and uh, but Jehovah's witnesses don't do that. They don't do they don't do any medical things that require bloodletting, you know. Uh, so he probably heavily relied on pain medication for him to be able to perform and do what he wanted to do. And that shit, even when it's prescribed by a doctor and you're taking it for pain, is still addicting, you know. Right. I don't fault the guy for that. It ain't like he went down to the street corner and bought some smack on the street, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Trying to survive and mm -hmm. trying to continue to do what he loved. Right. I, I can't fault the guy for that. Hell, I'm in the same boat. Uh, so, yeah, it's a shame. But yeah, you, you know, yeah. And it's just, it's, it's just mind blowing. I was listening to the radio after I dropped uh, the wife off at work this morning. And uh, I was listening to the classic rock uh, station here in town, which is kind of weird that they, uh, I don't know. That's a whole nother topic. But anyway, and they're talking about how many rockers have died in 2016 in the last six months. Um, yeah, you know, the big ones. Yeah, you know, Glenn Fry, mm -hmm. uh, David Bowie, Bowie, you know, Prince now, Merle Haggard, um, just a good old boys. <laughs> Sorry. There's a hell of a party going on somewhere. Right? No, somebody made a meme and showed it on, uh, it was on my Facebook feed where it's like, Oh wow! Go get uh, Hendrix. We're gonna have one hell of a party now. And yeah. had Prince standing in the background with his purple guitar. <laughs> yeah, I saw one that that had Michael Jackson, Prince, mm -hmm. and Whitney Houston on it, and said the King, the Prince, and the Queen. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big Houston fan. I never really was. Mm -hmm. I thought she did. I thought she was. Uh, she had a nice voice, but mm -hmm. yeah. Well, she did, but I, I was a big Michael Jackson fan too. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, MJ. okay, Prince and Michael Jackson, these two men and I were the same age, mm -hmm. and uh, so we grew up the same. Hell, Michael grew up in Indiana, mm -hmm. uh, you know, called a little famous. Gary, uh, Indiana. After a while, Gary. very famous, but still, you know, those those Midwestern values are ingrained in you from the moment you you pop out. So right, right. And uh, I don't know. I just uh, oh, and, I can uh, with him. Uh, Doris from uh, Everybody Loves Raymond's. Mom, I know. Mom. She was 90 years old. What a great life. I hope I... The first time I ever 90. saw her was in a sitcom in the 70s called Angie. Do you remember oh that? God. Yes, vaguely. Yes. I remember that. That it, It's mind-blowing that my old ass can remember that. And I'm older than you. Right. She was uh, so funny. Spot on. She was hilarious. You know, and she played that bitchy mother-in-law thing like a champ in Everyone Loves Raymond. Oh, she was perfect for that. Right. So, perfect. But it, it just, I don't know, it's weird. It's weird that there there have been that many celebrities pass away. And have uh, question, mm -hmm. ghost hunting, uh, poor paranormal researchers, investigators, mm -hmm. how many have reported possible contact from through EVPs or whatever with celebrities. You know, I'm not sure. I mean, I read a story not too long ago from a lady who says that she had communicated with Elvis. Um, she lived in some boho, you know, 
oh, I guess it's the wrong word, but um, <laughs> some hillbilly, <laughs> some hillbilly backwoods town in like Virginia, and she's talking to Elvis. Yeah. You know, my thing is, you know, I mean, it's all well and good to try. Yeah. You know, I don't have a problem with that, but in reality, in my mind's reality, I'm going, why would they talk to us? Why wouldn't they? They're no different than we are. We're all. But I mean, let's put it like this. If I was famous, you know, if I was, you know, Prince level famous, okay, I wouldn't talk to me. I would talk to, (laughs) I would talk to my entourage. I would talk to the people that were closest to me. You know, it wouldn't be because I think what she was claiming was that she, she was, Elvis was wanting her to put a message out to the world or some kind of crazy bullshit. Yeah. And it's like, come on, man. Let's not do that because it makes all of us look like freaking morons, yeah. you know, to a level of batshit crazy that people can't get behind. Yeah. And I'm just like, why do but you Like think- if we get a recording of a voice mm-hmm. that sounds like Prince who says something strange because Prince was known for speaking in uh sometimes riddles or you know he's like obi-wan kenobi yeah sort of <laughs> i think that I, I i heard some woman say a news reporter who was a real close friend of him saying she would get a text from him and it would just say i you were thinking of me because i was thinking of you you know out of right. the blue hmm. or some, something like that you know what i'm saying i i think prince would print the, his personality um and my friend i i have a friend that was a pretty famous singer she was buddhist and she would uh she would talk to anybody i mean i think when we go when we pass over when we die however you want to call it uh we can be all places at all times and see everyone so uh if i thought of him then he's there you know what i'm saying He's everywhere. We're everywhere. We're all one. You know what I mean? Yeah. In a way. But I don't know that he would like give me a particular message to say, uh, the ring is under the counter in the kitchen. You know what right, I mean? Right. <laughs> I don't think it would be like that. The, the eagle flies at midnight. <laughs> My friend and I used to dip out for work. We, we would go out to dinner mm-hmm. uh, at our supper time at work. And he always... Me and him always went because we weren't like having an affair in because we're the only two people in the whole place that like Thai food. Right. So every once a month we would go to Jay's Fang's Thai for dinner here uh-huh. and grab it and bring it back to work. Well, it takes a minute to drive over there and get it and come back, and we only supposedly have 30 minutes for lunch. So right. one of us would try to sneak out. We try to slip out a little early and go grab it, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, our code on the text was "the eagle has landed," which meant I was in my car. Come on, let's go. Right. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> hey, my supervisor was cool as long as I bought him back to a girl. Didn't give a shit what time. Right. I came. <laughs> right. Well, see, that, that's what makes cool. You know, you're, when your boss is cool like that. Because I had one yeah. like that when I was working at Lily. You know, it'd be 15 minutes or so before actual lunchtime, and it'd be like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, do uh, you want me to go and maybe get, like, whatever, Burger King or go pick up some takeout or whatever? And she'd be like, well, f- hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, go to, like, get out there. My boss was like that. He was you know? chill. Yeah, just bring me no, back. I didn't this take is, advantage of that. I, I just got the food and, and came back, and we ate. We went back to work at the regular time. Right. I just looked in my security camera, and I shit you not, my husband is riding up and down the street on his Riding lawnmower. What in the hell is wrong? Is he drinking a beer? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Sir, I got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I can hear it now. <laughs> Woo, sir! Is that a beer We're in your wrong. hand? No, Oliver is not. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Greg, I've got to go. The old man's getting locked up. I love that show. <laughs> I, I love that guy. He is funny as hell. That's the best internet show on the planet. Steve, the DUI guy. Check him out. <laughs> Got shit to do or shit I gotta I, do. Is that what he says? That, that, now that's how he ends his show every week. He says, all right, I got shit to do. And off he goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I say that all the time, especially right. when my supervisor's standing around bugging me. I'm like, 
Phil, I got shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll just look at me and laugh. You know, I never really had, after that one manager that I talked about, about getting lunch and shit for, the other managers there just kind of sucked. You know, they were, they were too busy trying to threaten somebody's job all the damn time. Mm. I got one. I got a good one. Mm-hmm. Hope it doesn't retire on me like the other ones did. Yeah. Well, hi. So anyway, have you heard about this new show called Ghost Brothers? Not, not until you talked to me about it before we started here. That is awesome. You tell these I guys. Just, about I sent you the link. It's uh, it's going to be on Destination America. Oh wait, did you? Uh, what'd you send it on? I sent it on um, Hangouts. Yeah. Right. I found the chat box, which was behind the picture. I'm so dumb. Right. Hold on, you guys. I'm going <laughs> to put our banner up here so I can see this. Hopefully, there's some kind of effing video, right? Right. Hold on. Right. Uh, uh, let's see if I can get a trailer on here. That would be some cool shit. I can, yeah, it looks like it's going to be an interesting show. Uh, you know, hey, we'll give them a shot. All some right. of these paranormal shows are a little weak. Right. You know, and uh, All right. this is called Ghost Brothers. It premieres on Destination America Friday nights, 10 p.m. 9 central. Hashtag Ghost Brothers on Twitter. I'm sure you can find them on Facebook as well. Um, let's see. Dalen. You sound like you are hitting a ball. <laughs> like that? No, I'm, I got nose mess up. Man, I never thought I had allergies. And then, like this last, down south, right? this this last week, especially yesterday, because I went out and I mowed the backyard, which was stupid because my, I told you my legs have been cramping. I mean, it, it cramped so bad Thursday and Friday. I got and Saturday, but I like got three hours of sleep between Friday and Saturday. And uh, anyway, so I'm all like jacked up in the nose. It's all kind of messed up. But Juwan, da, uh, Dalen, and Marcus are the Ghost Brothers on Destination Destination America. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a clip, so I'm going to play a clip, and um, maybe, and I'll put it on here so you guys can see it on the video as well. This is from Destination America, the TV channel. You guys, are, you know, hopefully you're not going to bitch about copyright infringement and all that crap, but uh, I just wanted to show this to you guys because I've never seen it before either. And it'll come up eventually. Maybe. Destination America is the channel that we'll have our show on one day. One day. Yep, I'm telling you. Come on. Get there. Here Come we go. On. Ghost Brothers. Marcus, yo, where you at, Marcus? Downstairs. Mar- Marcus, come here, bro. Dale. Dude, Marcus, listen, bro. I sat down on the couch. Juwan was up there talking to Liddell, and literally, it felt like someone on my left hand side sat down on it. Bro, let me tell you. Let me tell you why that's crazy. Because I swear, look at it right now. Like it's live right now. You don't see any dust particles, and all of a sudden, right here when y'all are sitting down, out of nowhere, dust started stirring up. A whole bunch of dust started stirring up. Is that before or after I hopped up? Before, or uh, that's about for him. And then I, I hopped up. And then you hopped up. I told you, bro. Something literally felt, felt oh, like it sat on. down right next to me. I've never in my all right. That's not gonna work. Life experience right. anything like, it keeps like that, and I, I just, just genuinely don't know if I can go back in there like that, man. Bro. So anyway, I, you guys can go to DestinationAmerica.com and look for the Ghost Brothers. Um, That's um, interesting. But yeah, it seems to be interesting. And you never really see anything. I mean, this is the first uh, uh, show of its type. I got jelly beans stuck. Hold on. <laughs> well, Sorry. You don't like jelly beans? I like jelly beans. I don't like black jelly beans. No, black licorice jelly beans. And licorice. Are right. Oh, wow. I do have some. Hi, what is that, anise? That licorice? What it's gross. What am I eating? What type of no. jelly beans? No, never mind. Oh, the name of the 
Uh, it might be, mind. yeah. I think anus, anus or something like that. Yeah, anus. So I don't know. That's what it tastes like. His ass. Not that I know what ass tastes like. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you were to imagine what ass, it's like when somebody farts and your mouth is open, kind of stuff. That's how black licorice tastes. Greg, <laughs> <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, I love you. But we uh. We're going to talk a little bit, uh, nice little segue from the uh, Ghost Brothers. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about ghost hunting and some of the do's and don'ts that Deb and I, you know, we kind of do when we do investigations and what we don't do when we do investigations. And I think uh, we might do like a little segment maybe, like tonight we'll talk, uh, you know, EVPs or we'll talk taking pictures or um, whatever. Uh, so... I guess tonight, what, what do you want to talk about tonight? I mean, what kind of, like, flames your, your boudet? What? <laughs> did you say? <laughs> flames your boudet. Did you say flames my booty? Right. <laughs> well, would, you like, would you like to talk EVPs tonight, or would you like to talk about taking pictures? Well, you know I love EVPs. Right. But uh, when doing EVPs, everybody around... In the area needs to be quiet but don't whisper please when you do speak speak loudly because if y'all be whispering in the background it's very difficult to try to for somebody to that's uh reviewing the data to distinguish between a whisperer and an actual hit you know what i mean yeah and I'm that's going, one of my things that's and i'm whispering in the mic things. you know yeah and unless you know, okay, unless uh, I have to say I agree with you on that, but there's been times where I've even caught myself, you know. Oh yeah, I've done it too, and I have to like, go. Oh, stop, hey, Debbie. Hey, you know, um, oh, that was me. Like I got document mm -hmm. on, on the. Um, one thing I hate too is when you're out on an investigation. Say there's like I don't know uh, a, a plethora of people around and you start getting <clears throat> you know everyone knows what's going on and and you can't hear on a review of a tape anything but everyone other than where you're at talking mm -hmm. you know or you're right in the middle of something and uh you know you're, you're doing your session and someone going is going i hear something i hear something i hear something do you hear that i hear something i'm i'm doing an evp session how about you just shut the fuff up <laughs> I know, and that I'm really bad about this uh, Zoom in uh, H. What? Oh well, hell! <laughs> the H1 Zoom. The H1 Zoom handy recorder. Uh huh. This dude is so sensitive that you could hear a flea fart in the next room for real. So I mean, when you get a whole buttload of people on an investigation, even if they're in a whole other room. Mm -hmm. I've even had people be on a different floor and been able to pick up a bunch of horsing around and stuff right. on my H1, and it's kind of annoying. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it is. And, you know, you just have to have your basic, I guess, uh, uh, respect for what's going on. I mean, it's okay to, you know, and I hate to say it, I mean, it's okay to fool around and, and have, you know. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, part of the reason I do it is because it's fun. Right, right. But, you but, know, you got to have a little self-control. That's why you have breaks. And it's easy to get slap happy at 3.30 in the morning when you're about to fall over anyway. You know what I mean? Uh-uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Jacked up on donuts and coffee. Uh, Diet do yeah. and monsters. Monsters and Diet Dew and right beef jerky, oh, peanut yeah. MMs. <laughs> I don't know. It's a buffet. It's a it's ghost a, hunter buffet. Right. It's a <laughs> yeah. It's a diabetes killer buffet. Yeah. It comes with a side of insulin and a couple of paddles. Right. <laughs> but uh, you know, and don't be afraid. I, I guess as an, a new investigators, don't be a uh, afraid. Do not be afraid of just dropping your, your digital recorder off in a room. Oh, sometimes yeah. I get them the best stuff there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, I, guess, I get some good stuff like that, you know. And the only thing that sucks about doing that, though, 
is that if you have a digital recording that lasts the entirety of the investigation, that's four yeah. hours or plus of mm -hmm. audio that you have to sit there and listen to. And Not to mention, cool. if you've got five different rooms that you do an investigation in, you have five different DVD or DVR, or, yeah, digital voice recording uh, 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 files to go through. So you got that's you know, for a ballpark figure, four hours a piece, that's five, that's 20 hours of audio by itself. Not yeah, to mention that, that, that could take a week to go through right, or more or more. Cause I mean, we got, lives, good, you know, mm -hmm, I'm good for maybe a 15 minute file. And I have to stop. That's me. I, I like to limit my files from mm -hmm. between five to 15 minutes at the most. Cause you know, I mean, I, for one thing, my really good studio headphones pinch the shit out of my head. Yeah. So I can't take them for a long time. Right. But they are the ultimate best ones for hearing stuff with, you know. Mm -hmm. Come on. Uh, beats. Uh, beats. Damn, people. You know, there's some of us that has a brain bigger than a pea. <laughs> some oh. of us have some big ass heads. How about I got a big ass head. For that? Right. Not everyone has a large. little bitty Dre head. I know, and them things pinch the <laughs> shit out of my head, but they sound so good. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why I'm wearing my little uh, Apple in the air dudes here on my, sh I do that on the show because I I'm getting tired of getting my head smashed. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm good for an hour with these. And then I, after we're done <laughs> recording and whatnot, I'll take them off and I'll turn the speaker on, um, the monitor. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, you've got to really take into account, you know, your headphones as well. I mean, that's as, as more important as a, a, a recorder or a camera, because if you have some uncomfortable stuff pinching the shit out of your head, I mean, I've had headphones on quite a bit and it's to the point where I hate to have my headphones touch my ears. I know. Well, you know, you know, I, know I had that surgery not too long ago mm -hmm. that I had huge incisions behind both of my ears right and i couldn't even wear them for mm -hmm. hell i couldn't even wear my glasses for a while right that's so, why i lost them i'm glad that you found them though i found my glasses <laughs> yay <laughs> you're such a dork that's i am one. such a dork um let's that see. is true um try try thinking outside of the box too you know i mean how many investigations have you been on? Like, is there anyone here that wants to talk to us? Um, you know, why are you here? What's your name? Do you, you know, what year is it? Think out of the box, mm -hmm. you know, ask specific questions of whatever era that you believe that, that the ghost is, is from, because I mean, when a good investigating team will walk into at least the lead investigators will walk into an investigation knowing the premise of the, the haunting or I mean, alleged haunting. Get a little bit of history on the right. Get a little bit of background on where you're going to be at and what, mm -hmm. what may or may not have happened there. Right. You know? And then, you know, uh, that being said as well, your lead investigator should have the team before you even start go, okay, let, let's look at focusing questions from here, there, you know, this era, uh, 20s, 30s, 40s. When was the house built? You know, let's look at maybe, you know, a generation later after the house was built. So, you know, this house was built in the 30s, but there was a house here before then. And I look, I try to find names mm -hmm. in history, you know, and uh, like owners or the children of owners, right. or if that something happened in the house mm -hmm. to, you know, look for for a name, and then when you do your VP sessions, use that name, and maybe it could be a trigger. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And you know, and you know, ask you know to try to find out if it's an intelligent haunt. You know, ask. Can you tell me? You know, like how many people are here in the room with me? Yeah. Or can you say my name? Because there's nothing better than going through and, and reviewing audio and hearing something say your name. I know I've heard, I've had EVPs that have said, how's it going, Deb? Mm. And I'm like, uh, apparently somebody knows me. Or how about the boy? When we were out <laughs> doing an investigation, the ghost was calling him, what, a little bitch? 
<laughs> you got called a bitch once. Right, I got called a bitch once. You know. And I think you need to make sure too that your team is aware that okay, look. You know, we're here for a reason. There there is, you know, we're here to find out answers. We're here to either help the homeowner realize that they're not crazy by thinking there's a ghost in their house or that there's a reason that they think there's a ghost in their house. You know, um, sometimes you get lucky and, and you ask a question, you know, like, why are you here? I mean, I, I've asked that question before, you know, why are you here? And I've gotten responses back and finished business. Well, it, it I, I never, I, when I think about it, I never really get anything further than unfinished business because, yeah, you know, not, it, you're not listening to it in real time. And remember to give yourself a little space in between questions. So you're not like, what's your name? Why are you here? What year is it? Who's the president? Um, what kind of car did you drive? Did you have a horse? Did you milk cows? Did you, you know, kick dogs or, or whatever? Yeah. You know, no. I have had uh, some, which has been very fun, Some something like a, a, an actual two-way conversation using a K2 meter. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, like you said, I have to wait till after the fact to go back and listen to the audio, mm -hmm. which that's kind of, a, um, kind of a bummer. I've seen things where people can hear it in real time. And I'm not quite sure if you just stick headphones in your recorder and that's how you do or you know what I mean? Or if there's some other extra thing you need to do. There is a, uh, a device that Brandon Alvis and his team uh, created. And I have one. It's upstairs in my, in my ghost hunting stuff. But it, it gives real time. It's like an EMF digital recorder uh, meter. And what it does, it gives you real time um, verification on doing EVP sessions. So, you know, if you're looking at this meter and I'd have to get it and start playing with it again, it's been like four years since I used it, but, um, the, the meter will go up when there's hits on the audio. So, I mean, it's pretty, pretty cool how, uh -huh. how it works. Um, then I, I think if you have like, and, and I've only really ever done this with old school, uh, tape recorders you know the rectangle long foot long push the two buttons to record put the microphone in and you're holding the microphone out got one having, of them yep have your headphones plugged into that and you can listen to it real time as well um but anything other than that i think as far as real time unless it's of course a disembodied voice um would be in a, in a situation like what we are in right now where we would hear it coming through on the audio playback as we were, were doing, say, like our show where we were talking back and forth in between, you know, the, the computer and it picks up digitally because I mean, we've, we've had that happen before too, just out of the blue. Um, and I've noticed too that we've had some of our, uh, being on investigations together, that Deb and I have had some of our best EVPs when we're just sitting around BSing. Yeah. You know, before it even starts, before we yeah. even start. Yeah, and I think that's pretty badass. I mean, it, it's it's to the point where I think that whatever spirit is is around when that happens, they want to be part of the conversation. I think that that's one of the things they might miss about life in itself is being part of the conversation, being acknowledged. And I think that is part why you know we, we've had such such a success rate, honestly, with that type of, of EVPs. What are you doing? What are you looking at? Nothing. <laughs> you're, you're looking to see if the police are behind on the <laughs> riding lawnmower, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> I ain't got bail money. I got to spend it on this dog. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're going to have to stay in lockup because, well, we got the dog. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, People, I think, make a, a bad habit of watching the shows on TV and then thinking that they have to do exactly, you know, emulate everything that happens on the TV show to be able to do it. And, and it's not necessarily true. You just have to find your own niche and, and whatever you're comfortable with. And, 
You're going to smother that dog to death. That poor little dog. <laughs> he likes it. He's going to have to pee pretty soon. Right. I didn't want him to pee on me. I already had a shower. There's nothing worse than getting peed on. <laughs> oh, Shelly. Do you love your mommy? <laughs> Take dogs with you on investigations. Yeah. I, right. Dogs are awesome if they're not idiots like Nemo. I think you would be surprised. I think if we were to, you know, if we were there, we we're going to do an investigation, say, like on an old farmhouse or whatever, or, mm -hmm. and we took, took the dog in with us, Nemo in with us, I think you would be mm -hmm. surprised with what we would get off of him as far as, as his reactions to things. Do you want to go with mommy on go show when you get bigger? No. He's like, <laughs> I don't care. Is there going to be food? Right. That's what Nemo would be like. Is there food involved? <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, I thought, you know, we would talk a little bit about, uh, uh oh, was that you or me? That wasn't me this time. Shut up. Well, are you somebody's getting hey, a little look, bit? Hey, it's the wife. Who? It's, it's the wife. She's at work. Hi, wife. <laughs> Hi, wife. <laughs> dunk, dunk. Yes, I am the mother now. So, what the hell? But yeah, like I said, we were talking. We'll talk a little bit about ghost hunting and how we kind of like to roll and and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Maybe help somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, out there in this situation, uh, doing what we do. Um, One thing I don't like to do, um, and I see it on TV a lot, and I think it's annoying, is when they, when they get confrontational and provoking and hateful and things like that. Because you know what? I'm in their space. I came into their space. I don't feel like I have the right... To come in there and be all hateful and provoking and calling them names and trying to stir up a bunch of shit with them, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm just there to communicate. I don't, I don't understand why some of these investigators come in all jacked up and have a nasty attitude. I don't like to, I don't like to set up the stage in that manner. I don't like that kind of vibe being in the air, and I don't like it coming from me. Right, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, you definitely have to be in the right frame of mind to do the investigating. Um, but I don't like when people are being assholes either. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, it's I, not, I, don't, it's, I don't think it's necessary. Mm -mm. I've never once thought, you know, I would have to go into an investigation and go, you're going to talk to me right now. You suck. You're an mm -hmm. asshole. Ah! You know, it seems like to me that when people go in like that, and, and I've seen firsthand where they've actually gotten absolutely nothing at all. Yeah, because I mean, if I were a spirit and, you yeah. know, if I were in spirit form and I had some asshole coming in like that, I'd be just sitting in the corner going. Right, exactly. Not going to happen, dude. But now, on the other hand, if I had some really nice grandmotherly looking lady come in and say, Hi, y'all. We're just here to see if we can get anything you know, we're looking to be able to show everybody else that things really happen and it's real. I'll stop talking us little. <laughs> who, who's a grandma type lady that does that? I don't know. I don't know who that'd be. Right? Because let's face it, we've got sailors walking up to the house before it even Arr! starts. That's why, I think that's why the ghosts are like, oh, okay, we get, we get these guys are funny, so we're going to interact yeah. with them. They're like, here's Deb. Right? Hey, Deb. How you doing? Here's, here's <laughs> got guys. little bitch, Greg. Right? <laughs> these guys look like they're going to have some fun. Yeah, you know? Right. Yeah. And generally, that's how it is. That's how we roll. Yeah, and I think really, you know, it's when you, before you start an investigation, you have to come in with a positive attitude. You have to come in with positive vibes. Not only do I think that helps to bring things forward, but I think it also helps to protect you from negative things. Mm -hmm. When you are a, a very strong, positive uh, vibe about you, I think it puts off 
mm -hmm. the negative things a little bit. They may they may stand there and watch, but they may like, mm, okay, maybe we'll just move on to the next. Because I think negative attracts negative, and I think negative feeds on negative. So mm -hmm. if you don't have any negative vibe when you're in there and you're putting out positive and good and light, I think you're you're going to put out power, mm -hmm. and I'm, you're going to protect yourself and everybody with you. Right. What do you think about these ghost hunters that are getting scratched and, and pushed down? And, and I mean, how many investigations yeah. that, that we've been on? Those aren't ghosts. Anything that can do something like that has right. never been allowed on this dimension. I, I, I just, I, I have a hard time getting behind. I mean, I'm not saying that it, it can't happen, I guess. Is what right. I, but. I mean, I haven't been into a situation that that has actually been the case with, with anyone like myself or anyone that I've been investigating. I mean, the closest thing I think that you and I have had together on that type of level was when the hand was going down the back of uh, Sherry's back in that barn. Yeah. And we got that on camera, but we right. didn't leave any marks. Right. I've never, in all the years I've been doing this and... and other paranormal things i've never uh -huh. experienced that or witnessed that so i don't know how much of that is good tv and how much of that is real but if and, and i mean i'm open-minded so you know it could happen i suppose but i will guarantee you that if it does whatever did it was never alive on this plane and was never a human being mm -hmm. and is not a ghost mm -hmm. it is something else to be right. able to manifests itself in such a manner mm -hmm. well i mean a perfect example is that i've seen pictures from investigators that have been to mackey's and for you guys um, that haven't heard of it then what have you been living under a rock but bobby right? mackey's in in wilder kentucky i mean i've seen vid video and pictures of stuff where people have been pushed people have been scratched when you and i were there nothing we had hell evidence though I, mean, I got that. Pictures. I mean, I got that one photograph of that mm -hmm. half of a dude standing by the pool table. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clear. But and you know what? The whole time I was there, I never ever felt a vibe of of uh, negativity. Right. I wasn't afraid. I didn't feel as if I were in any danger. I wasn't afraid uh, of anything. I mean, it just it didn't. I really didn't feel. I mean, I felt like. Somebody was watching me, but I didn't feel threatened by it. I wasn't, you know, it was nothing like that. They make it out to be like so evil and such a demonic place. And I did not feel that at all. I did not. And I don't, I don't get that. You know, and, uh, and then it all could go back to what you said just a little while ago as well, is that your, your personal light, your own faith, your own protection might have a lot to do with it as well. Maybe. I don't you know. Because, I mean, I've never walked... <clears throat> I, I think the most uncomfortable that I ever was was at, uh, as actually at the Crump Theater in the bathroom. And I told you that story. I know. I felt like someone was watching me pee when I was in there. It was a little creepy. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was in there, the utility door closet swings open, and I was the only one in the bathroom. And you can hear the door open from the lobby into the bathroom because it squeaked like a mother. So I would have known had somebody else come in. But, you know, I mean, that kind of made me a little nervous. Um, <clears throat> where else have I felt that way? I'm trying to think. Has there been any location that, that just actually gave me the heebie-jeebies? No, I can't really. No, I mean, that's really been the only time that I've been startled. Um, I mean, hell, I've been, I went to Mansfield. You know, and uh -huh. we were all over that place. And I mean, I saw shadows. I heard women screaming, um, which I know was, was legit because all the women that were there with us that night, were they were in the group that I was in doing this tour of uh, Mansfield before we went lights out. Um, <clears throat> but I did get an eerie feeling in the uh, in, in death row. But I mean, come on, it's it's completely dark, and you're sitting in in uh, death row in, in a maximum federal prison. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, it just made me uncomfortable because I think that was the scenario. 
I think the most uncomfortable that I've ever felt on an investigation was when you and I, do you remember when we did that outside thing uh, at, at uh, someone you worked with? Oh, gosh. I can't remember the name of the small town. But we were out by the... Uh, I remember looking at the uh, grove of trees out there in the oh, field. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And there was something... In Bargersville. In that, uh, yeah, that's it. There was something in mm -hmm. that wooded area. That, Kathy Johnson's house. Yeah, that was something mm -hmm. in that wooded area that gave me a very strong mm -hmm. feeling of, ew. Right. And Corey caught some pictures uh, that night mm -hmm. where you can see something some kind of energy across the top of the trees. And, right. That's and, the place. Right. And he kept taking pictures and you could see the energy swoop down into the trees in, in sequence of these photos that he took. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that was, yeah, that, that was a pretty interesting place. We didn't get a whole lot of video. Um, we got some decent pictures. We got some decent EVPs, I think, but. There was definitely something out, and I wish we could have got out there and, and into the woods uh, before I left. Yeah, I know. But, uh, yeah, there was definitely something. And, and the, I think the story of that land was that uh, the original landowner, which I think was her great-grandfather or something like that, um, shared that land with uh, an Indian tribe. Right. And I can't remember... What kind of Indian she said? Was it Wanapi? I can't remember. Well, anyway, that place is a little weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It was awesome, though. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I, and everywhere else has just been kind of, I, I guess I've been skeptical of the, um, reports of activity on some of the places that we've been to. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was going through, I was, I was cleaning out my desk drawers this uh, past week. I came across the Mackie and uh, the two Kokomo investigations that we did. And, uh, yeah. And then the one over in Franklin Township. So I was going to thumb through those uh, when I got some time here, probably this next week, and just kind of look it over again and go back over it. And all I'll that tell you, that one Kokomo investigation we did on Sycamore was fantastic. Yeah, it was. Uh, house was on fire. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's the that's where we got the actual physical evidence of. Uh, oh, yeah. The video and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. When the Marine was talking to the uh, ghost and the ghost mm -hmm. was sounded off back to the Marine, that was pretty intense. Oh my gosh, he didn't have any body. It's just all head. Say hi. <laughs> He's going to pee on your camera. And I would die. Funny. That would be hilarious. No, well, that would not be hilarious. We're coming up to the top of the hour anyway. So Deb's got to take her little uh, Sheldon outside to go pee pee in the potty. Yes. And uh, I got to get all this uh, stuff posted up. But. Uh, so you guys can take it, check it out. It's uh, infrared radio po PGP no infrared PGP radio dot dot com. You can look for us on YouTube at infrared radio and WPGP radio. I've been able I figured out how to post it to both of those websites on both YouTube channels. Um, cool. You can check us out on uh, UStream if you need to get a in touch with us. You can check us out WPGP radio at gmail dot com. Hit Deb or I up. We'll get back to you. Uh, next week, we're going to have a guest with us. Angela Tibbetts is going to be joining us. Tibbetts Johnson, I should say. Uh, she has, used to be with uh, NKYPS, Crystal's group. Started her own group, left that. And what she's doing now is she's restoring cemeteries and um, graveyards and stuff like that with this organization that she started. So we're going to have her on and talk to her about that uh, cool. next week. And, um, yeah, we're out of beer and out of here. Ah, all right. I'm Greg. That's Deb. Remember, join us next week for Infrared Radio here on the PGP Radio Network. And uh, we'll talk to you, everybody, later. You've been listening to Infrared Radio here on the PGP Radio Network. Join Deb and Greg every Saturday night. 9 
Standard Time, WPGP, Digital Radio, Augusta, Georgia.